pieces, but this meeting is being recorded. This is a special project for the mayor and council, and it's almost an all hands on deck with all departments trying to assist in seeing how we can carry this recommendation forward and involving the community with how to um, get it achieved, the goals achieved. So with that I'll begin. The next slide, please. Maria, can you switch the Can next you see slide? it? I yeah. go to the next slide. Oh, <laughs> thank you. You can economic development. We're not used to zoning meetings, so bear with us, if you will. It's still stuck on the one slide, Maria. It is? Okay, it shows the next slide on my end. Excuse me. Let me try again to stop sharing. Well, I could further discuss why she's pulling it up. You know, over the past year or so, the mayor and the city manager's office have done extensive outreach in this area to see how neighborhoods feel as far as development, redevelopment, crime. We've had the Hometown for All initiative going on with the mayor as well, um, looking especially at affordable housing, but all types of housing. Um, so this is a real, is an area of importance to them and um, getting statistics and data from um, our city manager's office has helped us formulate maybe um, this type of approach um, to go and upzone the Ramada. Um, January 13th, as you could see there, is when they initiated and directed staff to get out and try to upzone and reach out to the community. Um, it's a rezoning and a general plan amendment. We're acting on behalf of the property owner. Like I mentioned, it's a one-year pilot project, so it's a year to evaluate to see how successful this is. And by all means, we're not going to rezone neighborhoods or area plans or do anything. Um, it, it's really just looking at this Ramada. In the past, we had different um, departments having to um, evaluate this site, including our police department, human services. Um, okay. Like I mentioned, but um, to try to see if we could help the area because crime was a factor in this um, neighborhood revitalization. So we are not doing historic preservation <coughs> throughout the city. I know I've heard several comments on that, that we're gonna um, upzone some historic preservation properties that um, Council well, Member was very specific uh, on that, that this was not to be a historic preservation type of uh, plan as well. But this is our first and only project as of now. And if there's another one that gets added down the list per demand, we'll do that. But we're really looking at um, the Ramada for this presentation. Next slide. Can you see it? <laughs> no. no, again, just click on it, if you will, or I, I did. Or... Can you see it? We can see it, it just hasn't moved. Maria, try okay. hitting a slideshow and that might help with the I, I'm in a slideshow. Huh. Well, no, but what I'll go with the next slide and say why she gets that going too. Um, it's the rationale for this. I started going into this uh, regardless of the slide being up or not. Um, I mentioned the hometown for all um, economic development, how we got involved with this is over the past 40 years, we've had 40,000 jobs come to the city of Tempe. Landlocked and um, really for housing limited on where we can put housing. Um, this site, the upzoning that we're doing, we do not have a client yet. Um, we're putting this in place. Um, I don't know how many of you have heard of the term shovel ready. We're trying to get it ready to get a housing project there. We don't know who will purchase the project at this time, um, but we're just trying to cover our bases to see, to make it a quick transaction um, so that when it's whoever purchases it, that we have enough information from the community that we can work with the new developer on strategies on how to develop the site. Um, as I mentioned, um, the call for action to address neighborhood issues, um, neighborhood, uh, um, neighborhoods such as Cavalier Hills has helped us address this. Um, I don't know if many of you know that we put a police substation um, in Union Plaza there. 
One of the issues was for crime, homelessness and whatnot. The mayor has reached out to the communities and heard that maybe there was a problem with crime in there or that there was, we pulled reports, crime in the area and maybe we should have a substation out there. So he was really proactive. And within, I would say five to six months, we had a substation out there for police. So we're trying to hear the call to action from the neighbors and the associations that he's talked to and individuals so that uh, we could address those. And then also again, the Scottsdale Road, the redevelopment opportunities. Again, that's where I come into play. I always get some developers asking, you know, what do we need in this area? How can we help? What's the goals? And it's meetings like this hearing from you that help me and help our staff um, be able to better describe what is needed. Um, this Ramada is only the first step, but it might be a baby step to a bigger plan that we all come up with. Next, Maria. And she's on the phone, it looks like. Okay, so the next was, I believe we were gonna. I'm, I'm sorry, so there's, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but, um more people are having a hard time, Laura, get on, getting on the, the Zoom call. That was a Sherry who had called me and she can't get in because the passcode isn't working. So I'm not sure what we can do about that. No. Okay. So anyway, the next Phillips, I don't know what is happening with this presentation. It's so strange. <laughs> they should be in now. There's uh, the passcode. Oh, thing. It's just the word Tempe with the capital T. Okay. Okay. So Ryan, maybe Try not again. Be doing all the rest of the meetings. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, maybe if I don't go in slide mode, um, it's easier. I don't know why this isn't working. Ryan, do you have the presentation you want to pull up? Maybe it's. I could pull it up. See if that works. Let's see. I mean, can you see it now? Yeah, so now go to slide four, please. So most of work? you, know slide, yes, most of you know the slide. This is a overview of the area um, right across kind of the motel six is kind of slightly to the south and west. We've got a retail center there and the neighborhoods that are surrounding. Next slide. For a closer in look, many of you are familiar with the property. Um, basically, the hotel with parking surrounding um, the site. Next slide. Well, just pictures uh, to familiarize those who are on the call to know which site we're talking about. Um, the Ramada is, you know, and has been there. It's, um, it, it, I believe, the last uh, purchase on it. Uh, it sold about three years ago, 2019. And um, current owner is the FAM family, and we've uh, gotten written authorization to proceed with the rezoning. And Ryan will go into the request on the next slide. Okay. Thank you, Donna. Uh, so this illustration here shows the uh, zoning districts, or um, general, sorry, general plan density designations for the city of Tempe in this area. The general plan projects uh, land use and it also projects residential density. Um, the site is projected to have a mixed use zoning projection, which would complement this mixed use zoning request. But the request for modification includes the general plan density designation from the medium high density, which is up to 25 dwellings per acre and is proposed at high density up to 65 dwellings per acre. The um, image shows illustration of what that change would look like from the property and the surrounding areas in terms of the densities um, calculations for this location. Next slide. This slide illustrates the zoning application request. So the existing property site um, noted here at the southeast corner of Lilac and Scottsdale Road, property is zoned R4, multifamily residential. The proposed zoning district de designation would be MU4, mixed use four, high density district. And this zoning district basically would establish um, a zoning category that allow both residential and commercial on the same site 
uh, within a, basically a density range of up to 65 dwellings per acre. The project doesn't necessarily have to be 65 dwellings per acre, but allows a range of densities up to 65 dwellings per acre. Um, just to illustrate maybe some examples of what that type of density might yield or look like, we've pulled up some illustrations on the next slides to show you some examples of projects that are within uh, approximately 45 to 65 dwellings per acre. We've got the Tempe Market Station. It's a new project that's uh, being built and under construction over on Rio Salado, east of McClintock. Uh, that project was in the 50 dwelling units per acre. And then we have Banyan North Tempe, uh, one of the recent County Island project sites that was also within that density range um, for that site and location area there. Um, so that's an example of a project site that could be anywhere from four to five stories that would yield that type of, of density for a project site. Um, one thing to keep in mind, too, is, is when we go through this zoning or general plan amendment request is uh, there will likely be a lot of questions related to development or the potential of a development and, and what that impact may be traffic wise and whatnot when and if and when there's an intent to redevelop the property site and bring a developer on board, there will be a requirement for the developer to bring forward, um, if you're familiar with this process, a planned area development overlay. That process will have to go through these very similar meetings we're doing right now of conducting public outreach, neighborhood meeting, DRC recommendation, and two city council hearings in order to establish a project's um, development standards. The development standards include height, density, lot coverage, landscape, um, parking requirements, all those components of a project site that still need to get vet vetted when a development proposal is brought forward. So right now, only thing we're doing right now is establishing the general plan designation and the zoning district for, for this mix of uses. Next slide. And uh, to follow up on some questions that uh, Don and I can probably tag team about this property site. Uh, someone was asking what the maximum number of units can be built on this site. Donna, do you have an idea of what the acreage is for the property? Um, you know, Ryan, when you were just saying that, I thought, oh, um, it's 3.14. I'm going to say okay. three and a half. Thank you, Maria. Okay, and doing my simplistic calculations, that could potentially yield about 200 dwelling units on the property site. So that would be a maximum, but there's certainly a project could come forward with less amount of, of dwelling units on the site. But maximum 65 unit breaker would be uh, approximately 200 units. And can I ask, uh, uh, considering it's similar to the, the Camden, would these be like, uh, Studios, one room apartments, if we're talking 200 units, are we talking two bedroom apartments? Can we extrapolate on people? Yeah, typically what we've seen in the newer product developments is a combination of studios, ones, two bedrooms, and a few three bedroom units. The so more number of bedroom units I have, it usually brings down the, the total potential density. Um, but if you have more uh, studios or two bedroom units, sure. then usually yields a higher uh, dwelling unit count for the site. Um, they'll have to show and identify how they meet the parking requirements for the site. And like I said, in those other projects, it, it, that can be anywhere from four to a five story building project height. Um, questions that came up also about traffic circulation for the rezoning of this process. Again, that's a, a deferred item that the de developer or would be developer that brings forward a project will have to address traffic and circulation in any proposed redesign of the site. Um, the site currently has access off of Scottsdale Road um, and it's on a corner site, has a uh, lilac as well, um, there, but there are restrictions on the um, Eastern property line. So, you know, input in that process in that project layout will be important to see how um, the site can uh, create access for a new development it's likely not be able to allow potentially left turn lanes off of, off of Scottsdale Road because of the median lane restrictions there in close proximity to the intersection. So typically you'd want to defer traffic to the intersection lane so that there's an opportunity to allow traffic both north and southbound. 
but it's certainly something that will have to be reviewed and evaluated when a development project comes forward. And a question was asked about the city's outreach for public input and who all received this notice for the meeting. So as with any zoning rezoning case or general plan amendment case, uh, the city is required to conduct a neighborhood meeting that has specific minimum requirements for notification. Um, the site gets posted uh, with a hearing sign 15 days in advance of the hearing notice. We actually have two hearing signs on the site one on Scottsdale Road and another on Lilac, facing Lilac. And then the property owner notification goes out to a 600 foot radius, property owner radius, to all property owners within um, proximity of the site. We also require to notify neighborhood associations and affiliates within a quarter mile of the location. And we worked with Shonda Warner and Neighborhood Services to, which they recommended going a little bit above and beyond the standards of the code requirement and basically notify all associations north of the 202 freeway. So all the associations got an email notice about this neighborhood meeting request. And then we also posted it on Nextdoor for, for opportunities to, to weigh in comment and pr provide uh, opportunity to attend this meeting. And as you note in the chat room, we're also collecting public comments for any uh, feedback uh, for this neighborhood meeting process at this time as well. So we welcome your input during the meeting as well as during the public hearing process. Next slide. So one thing we really um, wanted to get today is your input and we started with some potential project request um, ideas that may come from you is what type of ground floor or any commercial would you like to see? Would you like to see a grab and go, commercial coffee shop, whatever it is that you're thinking about that you always thought your neighborhood would benefit from? We'd want to let you know that the, the traffic study review, once that comes out, maybe we could send out a, a review or a summary of the report. But um, as Ryan referred to, to the process, the planning process, as they go through, whoever is going to take the property and develop it they will have to show and demonstrate their traffic study. So that's top of mind, I know, for many of you. Um, maybe it's to require mature landscape buffer around the property. I don't know if you noticed on some of those newer projects, um, by having them plant mature trees, that provides a, a buffer that'll grow sooner and quicker. Maybe mature shade trees along all the pedestrian ways so it, it truly is a walkable area. Um, put those on the pathways. These are things that we could help guide the planners and who once they get a submittal can um, communicate that to the developer as well as our department of what the neighborhood wants. So if there's things you could think of and it may not be today, but um, down the road next week or whatever, it's not gonna happen you know, tomorrow or next week, but send, we could start a list of what the neighborhoods want and um, report back to you, you know, or you could see when we'll let you know those who have attended this meeting will have um, the guest list here demonstrate and we'll send uh, when the public meetings are for the next uh, hearing so that you could be on top and aware of any progress that's made on the site. Um, before we go to the next slide, maybe um, we could open this up for discussion right here if there's something um, any of you can think of or, you know, give us idea of what your thoughts are um, on the subzoning request. We do have a couple questions in the chat I'm happy to read. Um, we have a question uh, regarding the potential height for this type of zoning, the MU-4. I, I believe it's yeah. five. Oh, sorry, Ryan, go ahead. Oh yeah, and, and then I added it in the chat room. Basically that a four to five story building would probably yield around 45 feet to 60 feet in high, overall height. And also Kim was asking uh, how many hotel rooms are there currently on the site? I think about where 120, 140. I'm sorry, what? I think 120 or 140 is what? Yeah, I thought 130, yeah. So. When it's Donna, it's 140. 140, okay, thank you. The timeline for the rezoning, um, that could be the next slide, Maria, if you wanna go to that, we could at least yep. uh, get to the next steps. Um, once you know, I just- uh, yep. 
screen so here. So as we gather the public input um, and prepare for the first public hearing, which is with the Development Review Commission, they're the recommending body of the City Council. Their meeting is tentatively scheduled for May 10th at 6 p.m. We, we hold our meetings both in person and virtually as well. So at City Council Chambers, or if you wanna watch it via Tempe Channel 11 or through City's Cisco WebEx virtual meetings. And then the city council hearings would be on May 26th and June 9th following that schedule. So the recommendation will then get brought forward to city council and council can make a decision on the June 9th hearing date. Deborah, I think I saw your question there. Um, this was initiated, this was a conversation by many coming through. Um, the city council said to help the neighborhood on this. Um, the owner did not come and um, elaborate that he wanted to sell and get out of it. It was something that um, through dialogues with neighborhoods and, and even through our human services department and we were, the city wanted to buy it, but it was too expensive for us. So it, it kind of evolved to this. If it sells, he's fine. If it doesn't, he's fine too. It's not something that has to be done, but he's open to ideas. And those are the kind of partners we want for city development that um, to help neighborhoods and uh, you know get city goals as far as development opportunities. But by all means, we're just trying to establish the zoning and um, so that we could attract a housing developer since we have the hometown for all initiative. I hope that answers your question. And Don, I'm not sure if you saw this in the chat as well, but there's a question regarding will there be any units slated for affordable housing or will these be luxury based? You know, at this time, we don't know who the developer that's going to, if there is one that's going to come. That's a really good question. Um, and we would have to meet with a proposal. And if we could get a, a mix of income in this project, we're, we would be thrilled to do so. Um, so it's at this point, I, I can't commit because it hasn't sold. It's just still a hotel, but we're just, uh, again, like I mentioned earlier, trying to get a site that is a shovel white ready for a home, uh, a housing developer um, on the site. So, um, you know, we can report back once we hear if there's any interested parties and, you know, quite frankly, the rezoning or if it, this is our public hearing process, but um, when we do find a developer that comes through, um, we may suggest that we have a neighborhood meeting and we come out and show whatever plans that they have and, you know, take it from there. Uh, we've had an additional comment here that uh, this person would love to see a bakery, a florist, and a neighborhood gathering place. Love it. <laughs> That's my kind of neighborhood. <laughs> uh, there was also a question about uh, making the slide deck available. Um, I'm assuming we'll post it on the website. We can, yes. Yeah, what we typically would do. Okay, let's see. Uh, there's someone here that says, I have grave concerns about traffic issues, transit traffic in a I don't know if that's the right word. Transit traffic in a motel does not compare to residents in 200 apartments that will be using the parks, Laird, and the multi-gen center. Traffic on Lilac and Marigold can be a nightmare and dangerous for the residential owners. Yeah, and that's why we'll have the traffic study. And, and for an, an initial thought, yeah, it, compared to the hotel, there would be additional traffic. Um, what we're trying to do and something that I know our department takes in consideration when we work with prospective tenants is we're trying to have a work live bike, if you will, to work. Most of the employment that comes into the city of Tempe is from commuters that are from out of the city. We're trying to get people in and live in the city so we could garner their revenues to go to our services and our parks. Um, we are noticing an increase in bike ride to work. We're hoping if it is people who work in the area that there's multimodal transportation. We know that where gas is going right now, we're trying to get most of our um, 
you know, other means of um, transportation utilized. Um, so this would address that. We'd have people living here and maybe using alternative modes. So hopefully take off some of the traffic. Everybody's thinking driving differently now, especially with their commute patterns to work, many working from home. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, uh, we just don't have enough housing in our city. And we would only do this on an arterial street. And certainly Scottsdale Road is that um, arterial um, for this one. But again, our traffic study would show um, whatever the proposal may be, what is the traffic count for the area. And you know, if there's a no right turn or whatever, that would all be determined at the time of the site plan review. But I will, we will note that a concern is for traffic. Yeah, and I can respond to the some of the density questions. So someone's asking if uh, yeah. lesser density could be considered. If, if you have a suggestion about a, a lesser density, please let us know what your your recommendation is. But this is this is the recommendation we're bringing forward in terms of the density ranges calculations that it's identified by the um, general plan. The reference to the Camden Hayden original project. So the the one that's built over adjacent to Scottsdale Road in Curry at the northwest corner. That project was 30 dwelling units per acre. It met the R5 uh, zoning requirement. And then the later phases of, of Camden um, Hayden um, along Curry and College Avenue, that was a project site that needed to get the um, up to 65 dwelling units per acre uh, density calculation for the general plan. And I think that was a little bit even higher than 30 because it, it didn't meet the R5 zoning allowance. It, so it had to go into mixed use zoning. I wanna say around maybe 35 to 40 dwelling units per acre. And um, I know Lee's on the line. Lee, can you confirm what that density was? Sure, or, right. Um, it's 34.25 uh, dwelling units per acre for Camden, Hayden two. Okay. And that was the, the, the final phase that was recently constructed. Yes, that's the one on the very corner of um, Curry and northeast corner of Curry and College. Yes. Okay. And yes, Darlene, you're right. Any new proposals will be required a neighborhood meeting to meet with the residents, property owners in the area to vet any proposal. Do you want to address the Motel 6 rezoning? Are there any discussions of rezoning Motel 6 on the west side of Scottsdale Road? I, Donna? Yeah, we, we've we identified three sites. This might be one of them. But again, we're focused on this pilot project and the success of it. We're not actively soliciting it, if that answers your question. But um, we would certainly approach Motel 6 and see if they would be interested in this concept if it moves forward in a positive way. And then a question about, did I see traffic light already installed on the west side of Scottsdale Road across from Lilac Drive? Not sure if there's new traffic lights in the area already planned, but I know there were Tra Transportation Division has been working on some median improvements in the area. So that might be related to that question. And a statement from Shannon Dutton, it will take more affordable housing before persons move to Tempe to bike, bus, walk, work. Well, we do have a project called Cul-de-Sac and it got written up in the New York Times and they're due to open up soon where it's a biking community and they the first phase sold out and they've got a wait list for the second phase. So we're very excited. We've got companies coming in from California. A lot of them are asking and that's why you see conversations um, maybe uh, within any city um, agenda, work study session and whatnot about our bike lanes. It's becoming more of a demand um, and we're, we're excited. We wanna have this multimodal and connectivity um, we're very, um, businesses especially want um, to address the traffic issues. So if we make it more convenient and um, accessible with either bike lanes, our orbit and the bus routes, you know, we'll start addressing this. And then, like I mentioned earlier, when gas prices go up and telecommuting, it, it does help the situation. 
see, we got a comment that Camden Properties have over 700 apartments. Scottsdale Gateway is being redeveloped from 400 to 850 apartments. Given this new development, that means seven, over 1,700 apartments within a half mile of each other. This is a true traffic nightmare. And yes, 35 on Camden. So 65 to acre is much higher if they go full amount. That would be correct, Deborah. And this seems like a much smaller property than Camden location. Not sure why it's zoned for 32.5 versus at 60. So um, you, the Camden property is, is certainly a lot, much larger development, probably has a lot more units than, than what can be conceived at this site. But obviously the, the, the number of density per acre factors into the size of the property with the number of units that can be placed on the site. So the, Camden site over there area has a lot of uh, surface parking area space and, and a lot of their units are, are more fronting uh, the street fronts. And we have a question, will there be a bus stop? If so, will there be enough setback or combinations for riders? Will there be mature shade trees to buffer the high density building and traffic? We, as new developments come in, we always coordinate with our transportation staff on any projected in new bus stops or bus shelter requirements. So um, if there is one there today, typically we do require the developer to provide a new shelter. Um, that'll certainly be evaluated at the time we have a project that come in, comes in and determine if uh, ridership for a bus stop is needed at that site and location. I think Donna brought up the fact that we had received some additional comments about needing mature trees or mature shade trees. And that's certainly something we can consider in looking at evaluating and making sure there's a buffer from the high density and, and the traffic. And it's, it's certainly noted that as part of the character planning effort, that was one of the high ranking elements within uh, project design guidelines is to look for sustainability, shade and mature landscape. Scrolling down, see this property in Motel 6 are hot spots for drug related crimes in the Scottsdale corridor, Curry to McCallops Road. Any strategy for rezoning and redeveloping is welcomed. Uh, sorry, mistake. This seems like a much smaller property than the Camden Hayden. Not sure why it's zone 32.5 versus 65. And Let's see, you can also, again, a note reference to the comment location for this general plan request. Can you please elaborate more on the crime that is occurring in this area? Donna, can you answer that question? Um, we do have a, a study um, that I could post as well that we've um, formulated the strategy here. So various crime calls. Uh, I haven't seen it this past month or two, but the ones I did see prior to that, we have some heat maps. I believe we may have posted it on the chat dashboard, but we could get the crime report that I was referring to, and we could also make that available for those who wish to see it. Okay, thank you. And then the question, there is a bus or a comment, there's a bus stop at QT and north of Lilac, Lilac in front of Dunkin' Donuts. Um, so that may be an opportunity to see, okay, is that still appropriate location for this? Or because of a density proposed project, is it better yield a, an alternate location for that, for that bus stop? And then a comment, Lori, you can search the city of Tempe crime map using LexisNexis. There's a link provided. Thank you for that information. Any other questions? Um, there was a comment that uh, that went by that the owner uh, who purchased about three years ago put a lot into the building. Um, he received PPE for COVID. And is there any information on why you turn around and sell it other than rezoning at a, at a profit? I, I kind of vaguely heard what you said, Christy. I'm sorry, we're cutting in and out, but um, 
again, it wasn't their idea to come forward and sell it. This was not initiated by them. And of course, anyone who sells something would want some type of profit from what their investment. Oh, sure. Was. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that. Um, so it is initiated. Usually they are initiated by developers. Is it something different that being initiated by the, the city? Is it the, and just the general cleanup of, of Scottsdale Road? Yes, the city initiated it. That's they directed staff to contact the property owner to see what we could do to, to help, you know, for rezoning. If I found a, home, a property or a developer right. to help housing, would they be interested? And they said, sure, we'd be interested, but they're not going to be the ones to zone it. So uh, that's right. when we get direction from council to do so. Is there a possibility of starting with uh, the Motel 6? Because... Um, Cavalier Hills was very uh, involved in this. Use that as a, as a starting point and an example. Well, we've, we've started with this one. Um, I guess we could have picked and choose, but this was um, maybe a larger site, if I recall. And um, we were, um, like I said, there was opportunities that we wanted to buy it to clean it up and couldn't afford it. So it, it, there was already some kind of dialogue going on to see what we could do to help the area. So it just fell into place this way. Um, and it worked out that on our um, evaluation and strategies that this was the site we chose to go first. I don't want to interrupt if there's more questions, but um, as chair of Indian Bend, there, there are neighbors. So uh, I have some comments on, on that, but I don't want to uh, interrupt the flow. I saw something from that. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Darlene Justice noted that Molly and Wright Tempe Police can provide 2022 crime stats for the Scottsdale Corridor. And um, the Browns commented that, who can I contact to put my recommendations for consideration in writing? Um, will my recommendations be passed on to um, it's actually DRC, the Voluntary Review Commission? And yes, the uh, Lee Jimenez, who's, who's online with us, is the project uh, case planner for this request. And so, we have contact information here yeah. on the next slide um, for Maria and Lee. Yes. So either phone number or, or email, but providing the written comments and via email will certainly get your public comments on record as part of the staff report brought forward to not only commission but city council as well. And uh, you know, the, you bring up some good points uh, about Motel Six. I think when when we get to that point where the evaluation period is for council at the end of the year, that might be good comments to bring up to city council at that time. I have, can I speak now or are you still going? Go ahead, Lane. I think most people don't understand what has been going on for several years. It's called a, basically the vicious triangle effect up here. We have, we don't have homeless, we have drug addicts and mental issue people. They start at Mo can start at Motel 6, they get evicted, they go to the Santa Fe Court Apartments. From there, they go to Ramada, they get evicted, they go back to Motel 6. The city has been active in trying to resolve all three of these. This is the first one that, that the city has been able to do anything with. So getting rid of Ramada is going to make a huge change up here. Then the city can focus on Motel 6. Then they can focus in Santa Fe and get rid of some of the riffraff and issues we had up here. For those who don't know, smoking lingerie was held up at gunpoint this weekend. We had Philly's parking lot person held up at gunpoint. We have got homeless all throughout our neighborhood. I had this weekend two homeless drug addicts who decided to set up camp in my driveway on my furniture, smoking cigarettes, drinking beer, and with stolen merchandise that they had stolen. The only way to start cleaning up our area north of the lake is we have to redevelop. I know a lot of people are against development on this site here, but if we don't start doing something soon, we're not gonna have a community up here. It's just get worse and worse. The city finally got something to do with the Ramada, we need to get behind the city, support this project, then move over to either the Motel 6 or to Santa Fe Court Apartments and clean up our community because it's only going to get worse and worse up here. And 
The substation, we, Mayor Woods agreed with us over in Cavalier that we need a substation, we need it now. And that is why they put one in the Pollock Shopping Center on the west side of Scottsdale to try to assist with this crime. Yes, Motel 6 is still a problem. Yes, Santa Fe is still a problem. But if you get rid of one of these projects, you now can focus on the other two. If we don't get this project or something put through it, Ramada, this person that owns this is running an illegal substance abuse clinic over there. You say you've got 140 rooms. Do you know how many people actually are in that complex? You're talking husbands, wives, and kids. You have over 50 plus kids going to Laird School that are part of that Ramada project. So you're looking at 300 to possibly 400 people living at the Ramada right now. So when you want to talk about density and volume, you already have it at the Ramada Inn. So I understand I live on the west side. I respect Indian Bend because they're going to hit catch the bigger blunt of this, but we have got to work together and get this cleaned up. Yes, there is a stoplight that is scheduled to go in at Lilac and Cavalier Hills. We're pushing to have a four-way done there so that that will ease traffic. It also will slow the traffic down, making it less a speed zone for us but we have got to all get on board behind these projects. If we don't, it's going to just get worse and worse up here. And Thank every day- you. I think that's why the uh, my question out to everybody to really consider what you want right. so that we can help you help us. Right. And, um, especially if you email either uh, Maria or Lee, we can start documenting it to formulate uh, strategy that we can report back and send a memo or go meet with council and say the feedback we got after we're done with these uh, public meetings about what this could be to give them a heads up and give them ideas especially with the drc too so right. happy that you can participate in this and um and you know traffic will be an issue and that will be one right. too it's not all gonna be um, oh, this is going to be the greatest project. We want to see how to address issues and how how can we move forward in an urban context that we're in um, for future generations. And, you know, it's like I said, being landlocked isn't the easiest thing for our planners because we're trying to address many issues. But this is one site that will have many purposes of, for redevelopment that will benefit the community, especially in the immediate area. And... Um, Oh, Chrissy, were you done too? I look like you wanted to say um, Yeah, I, I'll have to speak with um, with neighbors and get their input. With, with these things, it's very hard to, to see, but once they understand that this will be not a two-story building, but a four and five-story building, um, traffic I mean, might be taken out of median because, um, yeah, doubling our neighborhood like that, anything that goes down uh, any additional traffic that that uh, comes onto Marigold, uh, down Lilac, uh, is a definite no for us. I will say, um, I, I couldn't reach Mr. Pham. I tried eight numbers um, uh, this afternoon to find out where he's at. Um, I'm, I'm happy to know he's, he's, he's moderate uh, with both ways. I will tell you, I looked up uh, uh, reviews on the, on the Ramada uh, something changed around December. There were still bad reviews about it by November of 2021. And as of January, um, I know they have, uh, I got verbally pounced on by, by three uh, private security officers just walking through the parking lot because it's going to take a picture of some graffiti in the port around the way. So I will say maybe this is information to everybody. Since then, um, since uh, the, uh, in what capacity uh, a, uh, uh, it's a, a, a detox wellness center uh, to the Native American community that has gone in there. Uh, we have had no problems. There is optimum security in there. It has been fixed up by Mr. Pham before that. Um, it's, fi it's fine. We have no problem with transients at that hotel. So again, I pivot to Smoke and Lingerie and the Motel 6 that still has something going on. Yeah, it's just basically in the general area. And, and Lane, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just thought there was a Respect, good respect to Lane, we talked earlier. 
Oh, okay. So sorry, Larry, yeah. but um, in points well taken, but it, I guess what I'm hearing too, it's in crime is in that area, whether it's Motel 6 or the Ramada. So I think- Right, but it's been cleaned up at the Ramada. For now, because we've been called, I know our human right. services have been there and with children and everything over the past year. So I, I, I don't want to get into the details of crime because I don't have the police. This is our rezoning efforts. Right. Um, but just to try to get your input on the what ifs and keep in perspective too, this is on an arterial street. Maybe we could put um, no turn right into the community or something like that, but sure. this is an arterial and a gateway into Tempe and this building yep. is not going to be functional 10 years from 20 years from now, you know, it, it's just, right. it's going to age. And so if there's opportunities now, I, I guess that's what we're asking to be open and to see because um, we are growing urban because we're landlocked. That's right. That's a little bit what, what is hard to do. If we say yes to one thing, we have no idea what we're going to get. I remember writing a letter uh, regards to uh, the Camden property. And I think it went up from, you know, the 20, 30 up to 45. And then that was a solid thing. But then the developer comes in and wants to be 65. So I'm not sure how much... And how much we'll, how much a neighborhood has to say on something that I, I mean I read the I read the um, the Broadview 2050 brochure um, and that kind of thing and um, uh, you know it's, it's great at taking our um, our comments um, I haven't I haven't I don't know how much sway that has but um, I will let I will let Indian Bend residents know and um, and we'll we'll see what what our neighborhood thinks and pass along concerns. Or, 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 uh, hooray, let's do it. And it, it, actually right now there may not be concerns. I don't, I don't want to stir people up and there's nothing to stir yet because we don't even have a site plan in front of us. This is getting ready, but when the neighborhood just get them alarmed, that, not alarmed, but notice that there might be some plans coming their way for them to have input on because right. really we don't know if it's four story yet or not. So I, I don't want to, um, spread false things, but wait until we have a project But right now, this but, proposal is all for good intention and sure uh, sure and that's what we're here to do and to help not only the community it might be a housing complex that's for workforce for uh, more affordability for some of our residents to have another place that they can live off of scottsdale road to go into so it's right. it, it, it just is open it up for opportunities and that's what we hope everybody can see that's what we're here to do so if we start giving some positive up you know what you want then it might turn into something that you want at the end of the day when we do have a client that comes on board. So um, we stepped in because there was a call to action. As I mentioned, I know there was some difficulties with early on at the presentation, the slide didn't come up, but- um, um, Can I ask a call to action from uh, the neighborhood group or entity or the city or- the, the mayor went out and did some outreach in different areas. Um, oh, I didn't, no, but he didn't contact me on it. Well, I mean, he's out there, but maybe right. I can arrange a meeting for you. And if you want to contact him, I'm ha we're happy to do that as well. Um, I mean, just I mean, just as far as neighborhood associations, I never see anything from the mayor on. Um, no, he didn't go to all of them, but he was called upon because there were issues. Cavalier. Sure. Was yeah, they're very much are. They're very much are. They were having issues, and we respond to people having issues. So it, we're there to help awesome. our neighbors. We're here there awesome. to help our neighbors. And um, there was a big turnout, I have to say. It wasn't one, two people. There was 30 people there and all departments were there. And right. it was on a weekend, on a Saturday morning. <laughs> so it's a, a couple meetings too. It wasn't just one meeting. It happened over a series of times. So, you know, it led us to come up with a strategy. We have, um, you know, we're proactive. We want to try to help before it gets any further. So, um, you know, we, we just keep an eye and monitor on it. And I'm glad there's no issues in your neighborhood. That's what we want. But I know you said you're adjacent, but we've been called to the site specific itself. Right. So I know our human services has been called in on weekends and had had some incidents that I'm not at liberty to say anything, but um, maybe that's another meeting for them to hold. It's it's not like it's crime free by all means, any means. Have you have you had, um, again, you can tell me the organization or, or what, uh, or Tempe to talk to. Have there been incidents? I'd be very concerned if there uh, if there have been incidents since the first of the year. Yes. Have you, heard, have you heard that? Okay. Where would I who would I ask on that? 
you could, why don't you email me, Christy, and then maybe okay. I'll set up a meeting with our human services director yes, and sir. we can review some things for you there. Or anyone who's in, it's Donna. Yeah, actually, if you go to that city of Tempe site, uh, the crime, it actually, you can plug in if there's family type crime and there's information up to date for this year. Uh, I do have a quick question though about the neighborhood. I'm not active in the neighborhood association. So I just know well, Ryan and Donna, you kind of both spoke about reaching out to some of those uh, different organizations, but was there any direct mailings done in the neighborhood here? Um, yeah, the, the, the them, direct but, mailings go to property owners within a 600 foot radius of the subject site. So I'm not sure if you're farther away from that. No, I was asking for, I was asking on, on behalf of a resident. I'm a resident okay. here in the neighborhood. So I know, I know I've seen some, you know, actual mailings from the city of Tempe depend, like yeah. I saw the one about the street lights on Scott Road and Lilac, but I didn't yeah. see any, I didn't recall there being a mailing specific for this rezoning. Okay. Yeah. We, so right now we sent out the neighborhood meeting notice for the mailing, which is 600 foot radius. And then we'll send out a second neighborhood uh, or second public hearing notice again with property owners within a 600 foot radius of the site that will receive the public hearing schedule. And I do want to make sure I, I see some comments we got to follow up on. Darlene would like to make a comment if Darlene could speak. Darlene, would you like to speak at this time? I'm turning the unmute off. There you go. I can hear you. Okay, I'm sorry, I was muted. Um, I've lived in North Tempe for 56 years and I've seen things change and things have been changing a lot, uh, a lot more in the last few years. And um, I think the pandemic just helped send these things even worse. This is an opportunity for us as a community to finally start making the difference. There's certain businesses that we would like to have in the community. Um, County Island, at least, is starting to be annexed in that. And I think there's going to be a change with that. There's been a lot of problems with crime and everything in the County Island. The Ramada, and I actually years ago, I had two wedding parties, a son and a daughter who got married two weeks apart. And we had our event with everybody at the, at, it wasn't the Ramada, I'm trying to remember the name before. But um, we have seen, I, I have drive around a lot. I, I drive into Quick Trip, I drive into the Ramada. I know that things have gotten better as far as security in the parking lot, but there had been rumors that they had sold the property. They haven't sold the property. Right. And there are issues. We've had problems between Motel 6 and the Ramada. It used to be the Hilton. Now it's just the Ramada. Um, they, they've had different types of rentals there. Uh, there we know because of calls for service there and along Scottsdale Road. Why, why does Tempe have a rural road that ends at the lake and then it becomes Scottsdale Road? Scottsdale Road is only in North Tempe. Years ago, there were businesses along there who wanted to be known that they were in Scottsdale and they wanted the Scottsdale address. That is changing. People want to be known that they're in Tempe. And and yet, I have been told by a, by developers, uh, the Bastet organization, that we have a demographic barrier. And the demographic barrier is the 202. So we can't, when we try to say, hey, we have this and this on this side of the lake, on the north side of the lake, there are issues. Well, part of the problem is things go down from there in a lot of ways. We have some very good businesses in that. But I think we've all seen the police have taken out bus stop, bus benches to keep people from uh, squatting there. And even at Quick Trip, there's so many problems because we have this mobile group. Now, 
that's negative, positive. We have a mayor and council who, in my mind, are really trying to help us and help all of Tempe. Uh, mayor Woods recently got an award for the work that they're doing with the homeless, for the work that they're doing towards affordable housing. Uh, they have four locations that I know uh, Donna and uh, Ryan are familiar with along Apache, where the city owns some properties and they are going to be building affordable housing there. There's been reasons that they have not been built on because they had infrastructure problems, but the city is taking care of that. So, and we have, they, we've purchased two different motels that they're using for transitional housing. Um, I recently took one of the candidates out to see a housing first in Phoenix. And the gentleman that took us around just praised and praised Tempe and how Tempe is the first city that has actually taken the bull by the horns instead of just letting everything happen by nonprofits. Our mayor and council are really trying to address these things. And I and this is an attempt to help us on Scottsdale Road and North Tempe. We, our neighborhoods are vibrant. Scottsdale Road, in my mind, is like a last frontier. Things are happening in the county island. They're going to continue happening. We've got a Papago Park Preserve. We have, our parks have been upgraded. Scottsdale Road is the biggest deterrent we have. There is going to be more development. Scottsdale Road in Scottsdale is developing all along McDowell. I know that there's going to be transportation issues, but we all need to come to these meetings and talk because there are things they can, they can do to divert traffic out of our neighborhood and keep it on Scottsdale Road. And there are experts that know how to do a lot of that. Anyway, uh, I do want to thank Lane Caraway and for his concern. And I want to thank Mayor and Council for initiating this little process for, for upzoning. This is, this is our time to make, start making a difference. And it only has a one year period. This thing has to be reviewed again at the end of the year. So it has a sunset clause. That's the best way you do something new. Because that way, if it, if it doesn't quite work right, then you don't continue on. And uh, anyway, I give everyone a lot of credit. I thank you very much for helping. I thank Mr. Caraway for his, his concern and a lot of neighbors that know that have lived here a long time and have seen the real issues on Scottsdale Road. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you so much for the time, Donna and Ryan and Ryan, thank you, and both of you for always being available. Thank you. Thank you, Darlene. Thank you, Darlene. Yeah, uh, just to follow up on a couple comments in the chat, um, questions about detox center. So there is a detox center for the Native American community at the Ramada, and then another question about can a detox center be at the Ramada? Are they licensed for behavioral health facility? So. Um, I, we have not been able to verify any of the alternate uses that were described. Um, they're only allowed to be a hotel or limited stay, no more than 30 days. Um, there are limitations on residential use of that, the site as well. Uh, we have a unique scenario. The Ramada Inn is actually zoned R4 multifamily. So it's a, it's a legal non-conforming use as a hotel, um, but has rights to be multifamily. Um, if it was ever redeveloped today. So I, I know code compliance has, has been out to the site and, and I know there have been claims of questions of, of activity on the site and locations, but at this time, it's it, the site can only operate as, as a hotel, limited, limited time stay. Ryan, if I could interject for a second, this is yeah. Cassandra. Uh, Mr. Pham has told me that there is no detox center on the site. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Um, let's see, other questions, let's see. Please make sure there are not too many stoplights within short distances, McDowell, Continental, McKellips, Hancock, Weber, Curry, Freeway. One more before the lake, enough. 
do not add a case. Okay, duly noted. I do have a question regarding parking in the actual location on the property. So, you know, I think a lot of places that we've seen kind of in downtown by mill, some of those areas, um, you know, the neighborhoods, the individuals that live in the neighborhood that now have to have a parking permit. Um, you know, I would hope to not see that up here, but, you know, I, I'd like for the location to have their own parking and not to be spilling out on the neighborhood streets if possible. Um, so that would be one thing that I'd like for the, for the city to, to at least address and to recognize. Okay. Okay, so the location for a future project to have adequate parking on site. Correct, without the use of parking permits for the neighborhoods. Okay, thank you. President. Okay. Any other questions or comments? I'm seeing some stuff about the Ramada. Um, all I can say is uh, I spoke with uh, an employee of a local business nearby and uh, they are a current resident um, and going through the program. Um, I won't divulge the website and name, I'll let things play out. Um, so that's um, it's not documentation, but that's what I have uh, to say that if somebody telling me about it. I called the organization. Um, they haven't. Um, they haven't called me back on it. So um, you know, it could be zoned for that. It could be rebuilt and zoned to, I don't know, help people, and uh, you know, not be not be huge, but still uh, give some help to people and uh, opportunity in this area. Keep it as that. So that's the only um, that's the only reference I have. I've heard it's been uh, urban lore and stuff like that, but they have some private security out there and um, somebody told me they're going through the program at uh, for the local business. Okay. There, there's a thing, sorry, there's a thing with the name that's a big fuss. So there is some code stuff going on that's, that's gonna play out um, either way because um, uh, it is not be, uh, this, this site is not on the Wyndham uh, website. So, I don't know about that. You know, uh, Mr. Pham and Wyndham are going to have to figure that kind of stuff out and with the city. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, comment from Lewis is our contact information for the neighborhood associations that were notified directly. We can provide uh, contact names, but we don't give out the personal information uh, for the notice. So we can provide you that list if, if requested. And then a comment, absolutely agree with the person about addressing uh, concern about adequate parking. This is a responsibility of the company to make money off the property, not the residential area having to put up providing parking for, for a company to make a profit. Okay, any other comments or questions at this time? I think you've all have been very active and communicative in this process. I very appreciate the, the feedback and, you know, we will continue to collect comments throughout the process. Um, our staff is available for Q and A or any written responses. And then we'll have the, the three public hearings on the item as well for additional public input and opportunity. So future input would count just as much as this, uh, now that I, I have the information, I'll present it to, um, yes. to India, India. Thank so you. Thank, we, thank you for organizing this and all your time, everybody. Sure, we, we typically prepare our final reports and go out um, to the commission a week in advance of the, the hearing date. So if we receive the information um, before, I'd say before May 3rd, then it'll be included in the staff report to the commission. But as always, any additional public comments that come in, we, we provide the, the commission or council um, copies of additional information that come through okay. our- um, And that should go to Maria and- um, Lee Jimenez. Right. Okay, great. 
Very good. Thank you. Thank you all. And hope there's collaboration and this is successful in the end for everyone. So thank you for participating. Yes, thank you very much.